Hi guys. Hi guys and welcome to Sisters in the City with me Anna Bikili and me Mahdi Bikili. We have dressed in formal attire. Well, I wasn't planning on dressing formal. Basically, I did my hair in this plait and then I was going to put my hoodie on and then it was going to ruin my hair and your plait already looks messed up as well anyway. No, it doesn't. There's a top part which you can't see. It's what do mess. you mean? What part? The top of the plait. Oh, this bit. Yeah. You're the worst Don't... with these plaits, yeah? Oh, who cares? You can't tell really, can you, in the podcast? Well, I can bloody tell. Um, but as I was getting out of the car when Kazik dropped me, he was like, what's going on with your... I was like, what do you mean? He was like, it's just like a line. What, well, your contour? Yeah. And I was like, no, it's not. Because, I, I, you know, the, it's the best thing ever, having a mirror selfie thing at the back of your phone. And I just checked and I was like, no, it looks, it looks fine. Where did you get that mirror selfie phone again? From um, Cassitify. It's the best thing in the world. Cassitify. Like, yeah, I literally cannot live without I need this. To, I need to get that because you've been raving on about it for so long. Literally, it's life-changing and I can't live without it. Cassitify. Ca- Casetify, Castify, Casetify. I don't know. Okay, how yeah, just, I don't know how you say it. Anyway, I looked at myself and I was like, "No, my contour's fine." He's just trying to pick on you. He was prick. like, "Usually, it's not like that. Usually, you blend it, blend it." And I was Who like, "Who is he? Huda Beauty?" Exactly. What do you think, though? Is it too harsh? Uh, actually, yeah, it's quite harsh. Is he it? Might, he might be right on that one. Really? And this one? Sorry. Yeah, a little bit harsh. But on camera, but you can't tell on camera. Yeah. Sometimes going harsh is better on camera. Because on camera it looks. Mm-hmm. soft so but when I'm going to go do content or whatever I put so much pink blusher on yeah and then it looks perfect in pictures so we've come here in this formal attire to tell you that we are resigning <laughs> stop I'm Mandy joking. basically just finished work I work now Mandy's since you guys work. aren't paying me someone has to <laughs> <laughs> no honestly I really wanted something that was going to give me some routine some discipline you know just like I had way too much free time. Yeah. Way too much. Because even though like the podcast I'm doing it and like I do my brands on, on Instagram, I just had too much free time. And I really wanted to get back into the kind of working world. Yeah, me too. I'm dying for a routine. Yeah. I want to be up by a certain time, be somewhere for a certain time, have a lunch break. Mate. I miss that. Come back tired. That's, I ordered I Nando's that. wrap on my lunch break. No, it, wasn't, it wasn't even my lunch break. I just ordered it and just ate it while I was doing my work. Did you get any sides? No, no sides. You good girl. But it was still 700 calories. Could how? you believe? How? It's 690 just for the wrap. I don't know how. What? And know. then the pot of Pyrenees is 50. Anyway. Yeah. Because obviously like holidays coming up, I was saying. <laughs> like, you don't want to be called fat again. <laughs> anyway. How is your first week of work so far though? Are you obviously, enjoying it? it's hard because like, you know, Gingerbread, he gets up for work, but... He can one day get up at 8, one day get up at 9, one day 9, 30, 10. He's his own boss. Mm. And then I'm kind of thinking like how amazing it is to be your own boss, you know? Yeah. You go to work, but it's not like if I'm not at my desk at just before 9 o'clock, I'm in trouble. You don't have that feeling. Yeah. But I, I mean, the hard part is adapting to getting got up really, really early. I don't know. I never, ever did adapt to it when I was working yeah, it's full time. I never did. I can't snooze. If I yeah. snooze, it's a risk of like sleeping in, sleeping over my alarm and then like yeah. I'm screwed my first week at work. It's like seven o'clock, my alarm goes off. Oh my God, it's really Trust hard. Me, it's Especially when it gets winter. Yeah, but it's good. I'm excited. I love it. I like dressing up for work as well. Like I wear heels, I wear a nice shirt, like a black shirt. I do a little makeup because otherwise it'll make me feel like yeah. I don't want to do the work. So I like it. I can't wait to get back so into I'm pharmacy. So I'm working for Gingerbeard and Cow's Lick's friend. Um, and he owns an estate agent company called Charles Henry Pepiat. So you can search that. And if you guys are ever in Kentish Town, come and say hi to Mandy. Yeah, I'm going to be there. But guys, it's weird because he's like my mate, but he's like my boyfriend and Anna's boyfriend's best friend. So we do a lot of social things together. We go out, we get drunk together, we chill together in the house, watch movies. We're going on holiday together. We're going to be away for like a month together. Me and my boss now, yeah? <laughs> With my boyfriend, Anna's boyfriend. And like, it's really weird because I just, I love him so much, but I really hope that it never, ever, like, you know, you get scared. Yeah. You don't want to, I'd feel the same way if I was working for Gingerbeard. I would never do that. I'd yeah. never work for Gingerbeard because you don't want it to become an issue ever. Yeah, I get what you mean, but I don't think it will. I mean, I do my job and I do it good. I'm smart, I'm a fast learner, so I don't feel like... Yeah. But you know, I remember when I worked in like Harvey Nichols, like if someone wants to have an issue with you over nothing, they can't find it. Yeah, but he's But not, he wouldn't do that to me because he loves me off. 
Yeah, and he's not that sort of person. And as long as you're doing your work and you're not taking the piss, hundred percent, just don't ever take. I the feel piss. like I'm less likely to take the piss when I know the person socially. But I always felt like that in work anyway. I always felt like if I liked my manager or my boss or whatever, yeah. I wouldn't really take the piss or do things wrong because I like them. But when yeah, I hated yeah, yeah. them, it made me want to take the piss more. Hundred percent. So me yeah. too. Oh my god, I was exactly the same. But I honestly can't wait to get back into pharmacy as well, like just to do a few days a week, just for some kind of like routine. Yeah. But I yeah, can't wait for you to start working as well. Me too. And guys, try and get some like pharm- pharmacy work near my office. Yeah. Can then you try can and do up. that? Then we can meet up for, well, pharmacists don't really get a lunch break. So, oh, I'll come and see you. But anyway, um, guys, this week is my birthday. But by the time this episode comes out, my birthday would have gone by. Oh, no. Yeah. But, um, yeah, this week's my 33rd birthday. Can you believe it? That's mad. I can't believe you're 33, 33 and you're just so free. 33 and fit. I know. I look better at 33 than I did at 23. I genuinely believe that about myself as well. Yeah. And you know what? Every single time I tell anyone I'm 33, the face, you cannot fake that face. Yeah, you've got a very young looking face. Me, so, I'm yeah. aging by the day. <laughs> no, you're not. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited for my birthday. I've, I've ordered my cake. It matches my outfit. Make sure you check my Instagram to see the pictures I want to take. Um, I haven't managed to book a studio to do so like a photo shoot. With that, I know. So... I'm just going to like make sure I get my pictures before everyone comes. Okay. Yeah. And I'm really excited. I'm really excited as well. It's going to be so many people. It's going to be a vibe. Yeah. We're going to have fun. Um, so today we thought we'd do some relationship dilemmas. We haven't done that for a while. We've done like loads of, you know, that Why Men Love Bitches um, book review. We did like OCD. We did a catch up. We haven't done dilemmas for ages yeah I love relationship dilemmas um, as well so I've got I've put in on my Instagram and you guys sent it in to me guys when I put it up on my Instagram do not send me essays I can't do essays you yeah, need to kind yeah. of break it down and make it shorter for me because I, I can't why because Maddie you should see the essays some people send in it's like but it, when we have the website that's what it's going to be like I know then I'm going to have to in, when that happens I'm going to have to shorten their Dilemma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's too it long. will take me like five minutes just to oh, read it. I get what you're saying. It's the length of time that it's going to take for me to read it. Yeah, 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 that's long. It's like me. I'm going to be sitting here reading their life story out to you, and it's just like, yeah, it's too long. It's too long. I need, like, look, not too short, not too long. Do you know what I mean? Something that you can read on a podcast. That's what I need. Yeah. Speaking of relationships, yeah, like someone commented saying, I dreamt that like Mandy's ginger bit cheated on her. I saw that. That's and horrible. Yeah. And I was going to delete it, but then I thought, that is so horrible, whoever wrote that, yeah? That's just such a horrible thing to comment. I mean, it was unnecessary. Like, why would you do that? It's like, imagine me, like... But Mandy, the thing is, no one knows what gingerbread even looks like. So how could you possibly dream of gingerbread cheating on it's you? It's not a point. That's like me messaging, like, I'm, it's like, I'm Reezy. I'm being like, I had a dream that you're... Wait, it's just horrible. Like, who does that? Yeah, but I don't think that person was trying to be horrible. Yeah, they're just a straight up weirder. Sorry. Why being mean? It made me so upset. It made me so paranoid. Why? Who? Oh my God, really? Yeah, and then you started arguing with Gingerbread over it. And you know, I've got like OCD and intrusive thinking. Okay, that's not, that's weird. You're the weirdo, not her. If someone said that they, get cows, they had a dream cows like Ginger, I'd actually laugh. First, you don't even know what cows like looks like. It's a dream. I don't know. I it's had a played in my mind. Terrible. I, thought, I literally it? told you just before this episode the terrible dream I had the other day. Yeah, but that's yeah, but some, impossible dream. As in, like, what I'm saying is, it's a dream. Yeah, but I started thinking, what if one of my listeners is a psychic and they have visions of the future? Okay, you need help. Uh, yeah. So Gingerbread was like, I'm going to find you somebody to speak to. I'm going to get you the best doctor in London. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you do need help. I, honestly, I would love to have a therapist. Yeah. I want one. Now I mean, I'm, like, working, I might just, like, you know, do it as one of my hobbies. Just buy a therapist. <laughs> Um, okay, so shall we start with, should we start the dilemmas? Go on then. I've got a few here. I don't, I didn't do too much of a long list of dilemmas. Um, so we can try and stick to a nice, a good length episode. Yes. Um, okay, so starting with the first one. Oh God. My boyfriend's best friend is in love with me. Oh, we all used to be mutual friends and get along really well. But then his best friend started to make rumors up about my boyfriend to me and put doubts in my mind. Sounds like a commenter. <laughs> he then confessed his feelings to me and told me he was in love with me. And so I cut him off. 
I confronted my boyfriend and he told me he would sort it out. A couple of months later, his bestie started talking shit about me now to my boyfriend, causing us to break up multiple, multiple times. But my boyfriend is still friends with him. Do I have the right to tell him to cut him off even though they are so, so close? What? Her boyfriend is still close to this weird devil worshipper. <laughs> That's Her boyfriend is still it's close. Like, how is your boyfriend going to be close to someone that just said they were in love with you? Sounds like somebody I know who remains close to somebody who just like has fucked them over a million times and like stole from them. Yeah. Somebody that we I know. I mean, I think that's not as bad. You can steal from them and fuck them over and be snaky, but like actually telling your other half that they're in love with them. Yeah. That's another level. Yeah, that is so weird. Who would be friends with... Who would be friends with someone who's telling their girlfriend they're in love with them? That's fucking weird. Do you know what's even more weird? Yeah. That she said that her boyfriend's friend, the same psycho... Is that okay if I say yeah. the word psycho? Yeah, yeah. I'm scared of saying it. Because we it. don't know who they are. Huh? Okay, this same person is making up rumors about her boyfriend. Like, for example, like he doesn't love you, he's cheating on you, like you shouldn't be with him because he chats to other girls. Like, yeah. And he's just allowing that and letting that slide. Exactly. And continue to be his friend. Exactly. Something weird is about going on here. Something's up with your boyfriend. I feel like I feel like your boyfriend and his friend are actually the ones that are together. <laughs> I feel like your boyfriend and his friend are gay. And then he is doing everything to break you up with him. Because explain to me this. How come her boyfriend does not mind him moving to her? Number one. Yeah. Second of all, him making up rumours about him. Yeah, Doesn't but make sense. You know how you said some people aren't jealous and, you know, like everyone's different in terms of like their possessiveness, their jealousy. Like maybe yeah, her Anna, boyfriend is just not jealous That's type. Not, not being jealous, mate. That's just, ain't nobody on this planet is going to be best mates with someone that's rolling up to their other half and saying, hey, I'm in love with you. Don't be with your guy. Some people might be. There's some weirdos out there. Yes, yeah, swingers. Yeah, I mean, look. I think you have absolutely every right to tell your boyfriend to cut him off. Like the fact that you've had actually broken up multiple times because of this situation is bad. And you have to tell your boyfriend, basically you're putting this guy that's a snake before me and you. You're putting that before us because we've broken up over rumours. The guy obviously fancies me. Who's these other best friends as well? Like making up rumours. She said there's other best friends. No, she's talking about that one best Just friend. Just one person. Yeah. Oh my gosh, she needs to get out of this love triangle, yeah? This love triangle. I don't know what way it's going. It's not a love triangle, Mandy. It's a love triangle. It is a love triangle. This. I don't know who this friend wants. What should she do, though, if her boyfriend doesn't cut him off? I don't know. Oh my God. What would you do if that was your situation? Unless her and her boyfriend come to a stage where they're literally both laughing at him. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's what you need to see. So you got... That's a really good point. So you either tell your boyfriend, look, you cut him off and that's that. Or if you decide you still want to be friends with him, no matter what he says now is not going to cause a breakup because if it does, and that's it. Our yeah. breakup is an actual breakup. We ain't getting back together. So you pick the wisely. The worst part is though, like him making up rumours about her boyfriend. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's always going to play on well, your mind. She's been smart about it. Yeah. Because he basically told her I'm in love with you and she was smart about it and she just cut him yeah, off. Yeah, obviously he's bitter. She he cut wants him, her. Yeah, she cut him off. He'd do anything for that nanny. <laughs> so, so yeah. She, I mean, she, I don't know. I think her boyfriend's obviously desperate for friends. Like, he can't lose any friends. Yeah, her and her boyfriend needs to like leave the country. <laughs> like, move to another country, start a new life. <laughs> Buy a farm. Like, get away from him. Fake your own deaths. Do anything. <laughs> Because he's a freak. <laughs> Literally. Um, okay, I'm going to move on to the next one. Right. I've been with my boyfriend for just over one and a half years. Oh. I've never been through his phone, but the other day with his permission, he let me go through his phone. And I found that six months into our relationship, he was messaging other girls on Instagram saying, you're beautiful, I miss you, etc. The conversations didn't get much further than that and I don't believe that he met with them. I don't know if I should continue being with him as I feel like the trust is broken. We are on a break right now because I can't pretend everything's okay. But I don't know if I should get back with him or we should go our separate ways. As What if this is a taster of what he might do in the future? Uh, he makes me sick. Uh, I actually have a different opinion about that. Honestly, this. the only reason it didn't go further than those DMs is because them bitches didn't want it to go further than the, those DMs. Otherwise, who would have been on that thing? Because otherwise, why is he messaging in the first place? 
Why is he messaging him in the first place? He wanted to go further than that. He wanted to just wank to their pictures. He wanted to go further than that. That a girl didn't let it go further than that. But us, uh, six months. <laughs> Look, I don't know. I'm not saying yet. I don't know. I, I, it depends. Yeah. And like, why is it after a year and a half she's going through his phone? What do you mean? You went through Gingerbread's phone not long ago and mm. it's been two years. What are you talking about? I went through Gingerbread's phone when I was his girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, from the... Like, you're talking about why is she going back one and a half no, years? isn't like she's... She's only been... She's only gotten permission to go through his phone after one and a half years. Yeah, because she said I never did before. I never wanted to. Oh, she, goes, she never wanted to. I've never been through his phone. Like, as in she's never... That's normal. But it is possible that like after in the first six months, yeah, he just didn't take it that, it wasn't that deep That's and it wasn't what that was serious say. and now it is on that level. Because like, do you believe that before I love you, anything counts? Because I, I believe like before you I love you. You got that from Sex and the City. Yeah, but I genuinely believe that. You got well. that from an episode where Carrie went home with the fucking model. Yeah. Because she didn't, her and Mr. Big didn't say I love you. And then... And she's like, nothing before I love you it counts. Yeah, but I believe that, don't you? And women are on our double standards, eh? Don't you, though? No, because I love you doesn't suddenly happen like in the movies, like suddenly once, like, I love you. Yeah. N- not really. Because well, are I, you going to be in a relationship with... Mm, I'm trying to think. Would you be in a relationship with someone before you love them? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, actually, you would. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you could. Because I'm thinking back. Because I feel like it's been such a long time since I've been dating now. But I'm thinking back to Kowslik when I first started dating him. And then we st- became, like, exclusive. Yeah. We didn't say... But we did. We did say I love you. I feel like exclusivity and I love you come at the same time. Don't you? Yeah. Well, that's what I'm trying to say no. then. Exclusivity comes way before I love you. There's some people on Love Island right now that are exclusive. Please, <laughs> give me a fucking break. Yeah, like, so me and Gingerbeard became exclusive. And then when, like, after, like, five, six months, he kind of said, I love you, but he kind of mumbled it the first time. And I didn't say it back because it was so, like, I love you. And then I walked off. And then the next time he said it in Greek. And then the next time he said it properly... I said it back. But that it's like and the first one time saying it is not a big thing. It's when it becomes an actual thing of like, he said it again and he said it again. Do you know what I'm trying to mm. say? Because some people are like, oh my God, they're like, he said, I love you. He said, I love you. Oh my God, it has to become like an actual thing. Like, I'm, I love you and I love you too. Because I'm just trying to figure out if basically in this what scenario... What are we talking about Because right I'm now? talking about this scenario. Like maybe those first six months, they weren't like... 100%. Like at that stage, you know, where you're kind of like not sure if you can trust that person. Yeah, because me and Gingerbread, our first six months, wasn't like to the point where I would have cut him off if he had DM'd a girl. and And me too. That's a big thing for me to say. But in those six months, if I found out he had DM'd a girl, even though we were serious, we just weren't serious in the terms of these things would be deal breakers. That's what I'm trying to say. But we were serious. Yeah. You know, we weren't sleeping with other people. Yeah. So, like, that's what I'm trying to think. In the her six months with this guy, maybe they were just at that stage where maybe he didn't trust you, maybe you didn't trust him, you weren't sure, like, the lines. But that would be six months after you meet. It wouldn't be six... Maybe she's talking about six months in a relationship. Yeah, do you know what it Boy, is, though, the yeah. dog has just bust a fart. Oh, God, don't. Mandy. No, don't. It's disgusting. Don't wave it around to me. Can don't wave not, it over here. Can you not smell it? Why are you waving it over here? It is the most maddest fart. Because you've been your two weeks. I don't know what you've been feeding them because they've been your responsibility like, for the last two weeks. I, I can't breathe. Ooh. Can you smell it? Can you smell it? Oh, you've been feeding them eggs? Yes, I'm egg fart. Did you feed them eggs? No. That is the eggiest fart. If someone comes in this room, they're going to think it's me and you. <laughs> oh, I can't breathe. <laughs> anyway, look, this is why sometimes I think, yeah, like going through your guy's phone when you're at the stage of like in a relationship, kind of getting that out of the way at the beginning is better because then you can set the boundaries and you're at, you're at a stage where you're more easily forgiving. Do you know what I'm trying to say? What? Like snooping then towards the beginning when you're getting serious is better to snoop then because then... But then you're, you're going to find loads of shit. No, thank no, you. No, as in like... No, at the point where you shouldn't find loads of shit. What point is that? Well, you're very exclusive, like... But it's still fresh. But you know you're not going to find loads of shit. Are you mad? I can't go through no one's phone unless they're my boyfriend. That's what I'm saying. When you're freshly in a relationship kind of thing. Fresh in a relationship. Fresh in a relationship. But then what you're going to go through before you were in no, a relationship? No, then you shouldn't. But look, I, I feel have like... I have no idea what you're talking about. What I'm trying to say is like when I met Gingerbeard, I kind of like set my boundaries on a few things, even things I hadn't found. 
there's things I've never found and I just set my boundaries on them. I was like, okay. you do know that if I ever found out yeah. like that I, you ever do this or DM yeah. the girl like that you don't know, like you, that's cheating for me. You do know that for me, that's the same as cheating. And I hopefully you see the same way. You have the same vision and perspective as me. Um, it's like a different level of cheating. Or like I wouldn't be cool with my man like liking photos. Like I found, I discovered at the beginning and I just set the rules then. But like if it happened now... Like the roof is on fire, do you know what I'm trying to say? So do you think that this girl should like give him another chance? 100%. Yeah, I think it depends. I really believe it depends. I'm like, fuck him off, Ray Red, but... No. Judge him. I'm joking when I say that. Like you need to judge him in like... No, I don't think so. I think it depends. If it's six months from the moment you started seeing each other, then give him another chance. Yes. If it's six months from the point you guys said, we are in a relationship exclusive together... In a relationship, you're my off. boyfriend. There is no excuse. If that's your boyfriend, I don't give a shit if it's two days, five days, six months. I don't give a fuck. That's your boyfriend. You've got your boyfriend is going into other girls' DMs. Yeah, he wants something from those DMs. But yeah? that. Those DMs aren't just like, oh, he wants to socialize. He can go talk to an AI bot <laughs> if that was the case. Literally. Them DMs are because he wants to get something. He wants to fuck them. It's embarrassing for you. Like, it's, yeah, embarrass- it's embarrassing. That's your boyfriend going into other girls' DMs. I agree. Six months from the moment you met is different to six months into a yeah. relationship. Or like six months when you're just seeing each other. Like, that's different. We're talking about in a relationship. Yeah. Look, my rule is if that's your boyfriend, like actual boyfriend from day dot, any of these things I agree. is like cheating. I agree. That's why I'm kind of glad you know that me and Gingerbread didn't become official, official, official till like November. I agree. Like, like it was no, you know when it was? It was mid November, yeah. And I we, don't even know when you're talking about. You mean right, like it May was like 2021 six. we met? And then November. So, and we, it was like straight away, three, four times a week together May, June, July. August, September, October, like six months. You were just no, like... sorry, beginning of November. Six months. We were, were seeing each other. Exclusively after like two months, we were exclusive. Two, three months, we were exclusive. But we didn't have an official like, we are in a relationship. Hi, this is my boyfriend. It's my girlfriend until November. Yeah. And I kind of like that because then everything kind of like gets diffused, like, or not diffused, but everything kind of disappears. All the dirt kind of like disappears in our phones. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. Because once you become exclusive, like, everything just starts disappearing. Yeah. I think it's always a good idea to not just jump straight into a relationship with someone. Definitely start out just, like, seeing the... But when people ask me how long I've been with Gingerbread, I do count those six months, though. Yeah. I mean, I you know, I just say, like, whenever anyone asks me about Kowslik, I count when we got back together. Do you? Yeah. I don't because know. Because I'm like... That break, and then before that, it was so on and off, on and off. Yeah, but if you if you had to look at like my situation, how would you count it from like when I met him? Yeah, I maybe. I don't know. Do you know? Because like mine was like so like intense from the beginning. Yeah, I think I would with you. Do you know what I mean? It was so intense, like. But you guys didn't like sleep with anybody else, like. So that's what it, I think it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. You know, that's why I kind of count from when I got back with Cowslick because it's like, that's when it's been pure. Well, it's like the second part two, Anna. Huh? You were in a relationship before. It's yeah, just but part two. in between, there was other people involved. It doesn't matter. It's like me getting back with my ex. I wouldn't say it's like, I'd say we were together and we broke up and then we got back. To, it's part two of my yeah, relationship. Yeah, but when someone it's asks you, if someone says to you, how long have you been with, like, let's say you got back with your ex, how long have you been with your ex? You're not going to be like, well, part two has lasted this much. We had a break and then we were together. No, a lot of people say, like, I've been with him for like three years, but we were on a break for like, we were on a break for like five months. I don't know, maybe, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. <laughs> Moving on to the next dilemma. <laughs> just babble on about bullshit. Yeah, literally bullshit. Um, okay. My man spends a lot of his money on things for his family. Like takeaways, grocery shopping, household bills, TV, furniture, which I totally get. Family is family and he should contribute. But we also want to start saving up for a house, start our own family. But because he's so giving, he struggles with saving. How do I bring this up without sounding like a home wrecker or him feeling like I'm being controlling or restricting him? Would love to know what you and Mandy think and how you guys would approach. This is such a difficult one. So, because basically, it's almost like a family dilemma. 
It's a bit of a family relationship because she yeah. doesn't know what to say to her man. But this happens a lot in like Middle Eastern, yeah, and like I think like Pakistanis, Indians, like that kind of culture. Yeah. Like a man still provides, for even his... a woman sometimes, but mostly man still provides for his like immediate generic immediate family. family. Yeah, they do. Yeah, and I know one of my um, friends has this problem because her dad used to give so much money to his brothers. his brothers and stuff like that. And then my friend would be at a loss. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Because her dad was giving all the money to the brothers. I feel like, you know, you have to speak to him and tell him he needs to learn how to balance his finances and his expenses. And She doesn't know how to approach it. She's yeah. worried about how do I approach it without sounding like she's trying to control, like it's controlling. Yeah, but literally like, yeah, I just think... Bitch, I need money too. <laughs> I know. You need to be like... Babe, the balance. <laughs> the balance has to be balanced. Because, like... There's no balance right now. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You're buying aubergines for your mama. I need my nails done. <laughs> no, I feel like you just got to be straight. Like, you want to start a life with me. Yeah, you can say... I want to be a stay-at-home woman. <laughs> <laughs> you can say it in a way that's not controlling. Your daddy. Where's your daddy? Why should we bring money in? <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> I don't know what she's on about over there. Um, look, there's a way of saying it without sounding controlling. Yeah. Like, just say it in a really nice way. Just like, let me take full control of all your finances. No, that's exactly how you'd say it if you wanted to sound controlling. Which we don't want. You don't want to do that. No, he'll run away. You can just be like, babe, can I have? Can I please speak to you about something? It's been on my mind. And then he'll be like, okay. And then you'll be like... Look, look, I think it's an amazing thing what you're doing with your family. Like, that's one of the things that I love about you. It's one of the things that I think make, makes me think you're like the best man. I don't think you should be doing that. That's way too much rewarding for bad that's behavior. That's how you do it. It's amazing. Yeah. It's so amazing. You're you obviously doing don't it. know. You don't know. Trust me on this per this person. This is how you do it. You say to him, because that way he can't get annoyed because it's like you're boosting his ego like I yeah, think you can be like it's nice that you're doing that but, but not, it's amazing one of the things I love about you, no, but, then you... The, but then the but comes in yeah but it's just way too much compliments before the bar because that way it kind of ooze, eases the blow of the thing that comes after the bar right, so what's coming after go on give it but I didn't finish all compliments so it's one of the things that I love about you. You're, it makes you such a man that you still look after your family. That's one of the things that attracted me to you because if you were the kind of man that didn't care about your family, I'd it it kind of put me off. Mm. And then you'd be like, but... Stop I, caring for your family. No, <laughs> but I also want a family with you. And oh, Excuse me. She never said she wants to start popping out babies, bro. She said, you obviously don't listen she to... She literally said she wants to save up for a house. Now you're trying to make her mama. Are you serious? You don't listen to... You, this, this is what how I know that you don't even listen to dilemmas when I read them. I don't listen the to most people. The first one, you said there was like more best friends. Now you're saying... You're reading. Maybe it's your reading skills. No, it's not. I said, I, we want to start our own family. Oh, wow. Well, then he needs to start like, you know. So she should say, but I also want to start a family to, with you. And you're my fa I'm your family too. So if you're giving too much over that on that side... Yeah. Like, you can't support more than one family. That's not true. You might as well go get a second wife. No, but like, babe, case. can we start writing down, like, your finances a bit more so that we can have a bit more of a balance yeah. so that both families can get provided for? Can I have a login to all of your apps? <laughs> <laughs> I honestly think, yeah, you need to just be, you know, just the way Anna said, complimentary, but at the same time, you need to be quite blunt and say, I'm worried because mm -hmm. I'm worried to start a family with someone who's, got so much expenses already. already. Yeah, so much. Do you know what I mean? I'm worried how you're going to be, be able to provide for me and my minis. Yeah, exactly. Because if you approach it in a nice way though, and in a, in a in a like Mandy said, blunt but nice way, he can't get annoyed and can't get angry or can't think that you're being controlling. Yeah, I do respect what he's doing. Um, do you know what I mean? But everyone has to provide within their means. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you can't be taking an L because he's providing too much on the yeah. other side. Otherwise, about... there's going to have to be another baby daddy out there for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, What's next? What's next? Okay. So, my boyfriend almost never wants to go out and I'm a majorly outgoing person. He always wants to stay indoors and I'm getting so bored. Whenever I go out, it's always with my mates, but never with him. 
send your boyfriend to me. It's exactly the kind of man I want. Babe, you should appreciate him. What are you going to do if he's the other way around? No, that's you know not what true. I'm going through? No, that's not true. No, yeah, it's true. You don't want a boring guy. You don't want a guy that goes out too much. We don't want a guy that doesn't go out at all. What we want is to create our own male robot <laughs> and have a function of how many times he goes out and how many times he stays at home. In fact, if we could alter the robot every week, depending on our mood... That'd be amazing. It would be amazing. Not in the mood to go out this week, tune to... I mean... Homebody. Yeah. I mean, that'd be amazing if you could just, like, tune him in every yeah. way. Like, I'm feeling tired today. He'll help me with, like, he'd cook and clean. But life doesn't work like that, like, man. Um, I've got the opposite problem. Like, I'm not in the mood for sex today. So maybe turn down the, the sex drive. Turn up the cuddles. We're all going to be robots in the end. What do you mean? It's just what's going to happen. What? Yeah. You mean the whole world's going to be like a robot? Everything's going to be robots? Yeah, but me, I feel like men are going to end up getting robot women. What? Yeah. No, I don't think... Well, already that happens, isn't it, sometimes in some countries? Yeah, that does. Anyway, um, I do you not remember the my ex-boyfriend that was like this? Ex-boyfriend or current boyfriend? Ex-boyfriend. Oh, right, okay. No, my current boyfriend, I think, has got a really good balance. Really? Yeah. He likes to go out, but not... You're more that, outgoing than him. I'm more outgoing than him because his job is a outgoing mm. thing. His job is a bar. I bet you anything, if his didn't have that job, he'd be the same as me. Yeah, probably. I've got the opposite problem of as this girl. Yeah. Like, Ginger Beard wants to go out all the time. You cannot contain this man. Like, yeah. he is the most outgoing person. It's too much. Like, I just want someone to like tone down a little bit. And I was settled down, come off the streets a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But no, that's not happening. He's like, when we met, we were both partying all the time, going out all the time, getting fucked up together. I'm like... That's when we were like younger, single, horny. Like, we're not any of those things anymore. It's only been two years, Vandy. God, you're acting like it was 10 years ago. Yeah, but like in two years, when you're in a serious relationship, it matures you a lot. Yeah. Single two years are different to single to moving in, living with a partner two years. It's like, yeah. it's a drastic yeah. growth. I get what you mean. So, so, I mean, in this scenario, I remember I had a situation with an ex. Do you know? Do you remember? Which yeah, I know which one he is. And he used to surprisingly, always, even though you've had so many exes, but I still remember. He used to always want to be at home, and every time I'd go out with the girls, we'd go Zephy, blah blah. He'd never come. Yeah, never. yeah, yeah. That was the most annoying thing. Like, yeah, I remember. He used to drive me nuts. Um, what do you do about this situation? Right, I think what you do about this situation is you treat it like you treat it like you're. You're, you're training a dog. What? Yeah. What did you do, Anna? You just left the guy. I left. No, basically, I remember every time I'd be like, you don't come out with me enough, blah, blah, blah. He'd like book a dinner or something like yeah. that. And, but it was so just what never. do you think? In the, end, in the end, I got bored and I left. Yeah. yeah. So what do you bored. think? What's this training a dog tip? Because <laughs> I want to know it. Maybe I could use it the other way around. Okay, one thing every single man on planet Earth loves is sex. Okay. Use your sex as a power. Don't have sex with them until they come out? Yeah. Wow, Anna's really teaching some like toxic shit right now. Where every time you go out on a night out or to a restaurant or whatever you do, you come home and you give him the best time of his life. I just don't know about that because like men in relationships are getting sex whenever they want anyway. That's the thing. Don't give it to him at home. Monday to Friday, he's on a sex ban. Only Saturday night you take me out fucking your brains off. Yeah, but this is just a temporary thing. This is just temporary until... He gets trained. Yeah, because what I'm saying is like, you can just always say, this is what you say to him when he says, why are you not having sex with me anymore at home when we're on the sofa? I'm holding it out until no, you come out the house. No, you don't say that. You don't say that. You say, you know what, babe? Like, to be honest, we're at home all the time in our pyjamas. I'm starting to feel really unsexy unsexy mm. I'm starting to feel slobby and like my sex drive just isn't the same when yeah. I'm like you know what will make my sex drive shoot up dressing It'll, up and going dressing out dressing up and going out for a few cocktails of you yeah then I'll be really horny what do you think about that I think it does work definitely a slow <laughs> thick guy would definitely get trained yeah and most men are slow and thick so <laughs> it's really toxic though what I've just said because you yeah. should never use your sex as a power. Yeah, as a, as a weapon. It's just like men using money as a weapon. Yeah. If really, they're in a financially it's, it's dominant situation. Really wrong. It's really wrong. But that's our advice. <laughs> Sometimes you've got to do what you've got to do. Right, so what do you think I should do, Anna? Maybe I shouldn't have sex with ginger beard. <laughs> yeah, when you go out. Unless... You stay at home with him. Stay at home with me in my pyjamas, no.
Why? Because I'd rather have sex. And, like, as women, you'd rather have sex when you're dressed up and you're out anyway. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll be doing something I don't want to be doing. Mm. I'd rather mainly be doing it on yeah, those nights. Yeah, but if you really cared, then you might try this. I don't know. I just feel like when you're in a relationship, it's just awkward to be saying no. I feel like you should know that more than anyone. No, I say no all the time. And I and I mean, it's annoying saying no because it's like a battle for half an hour, one hour of constantly like it's, back and forth. Yeah, but saying no in general just puts a really awkward spin on the situation. Not really, because I have to, because I mean, it's every... <laughs> day <laughs> more than once a day trying so <laughs> I have to say no I just feel like when in a relationship it's like I'm in a relationship what do you mean no because I'm not in the mood that's what I say now mm. I'm not in the mood I'm not in the mood and if you think you, you know could... what really annoyed me yeah like was it last I can't remember when it was but I went out and it looked really hot and then I come home and I was like I'm really drunk and you know when they're not sticking it on you you're like fuck it I wiped my makeup off I like, went upstairs I had a pizza ordered stuffed my face with pizza Garlic bread. Yeah. So much garlic bread, Anna. Yeah. Full face of garlic bread. Garlic bread sauce all over my face. And then I got my PJs. And I'm just like, such an icky mess. And then he tries to have sex with me. So annoying. And you know, my stomach hurt so much. That's how much yeah. I've eaten. And I was like, stunk of garlic bread. It's just this... I was like, you're actually a weirdo, man. You're a weirdo. Yeah, what is it with I don't want to have sex when I feel like that. Yeah, I, one thing I hate so much is having sex just after I've eaten... Or the worst thing that tops it even more is after I've had loads of water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then I'm like... Yeah, you know that sound? But also, just after like you've gone from looking sexy to like making yourself... Yeah, I think no. I think men just have a thing for like that whole pajama and no makeup look. Yeah, I swear to God. <laughs> as soon as I've got makeup on at home, Ginger Beer's like, take off your makeup, wipe it off, wipe it off. Yeah. I've become like so weird about makeup myself though, have you? Yeah, I think it's age. I just want to... Like, take since it I've had it on all day, I've had it on since like 7.30 a.m. And now it's like, guys, it's like 7 p.m. right now. So all day. I just feel like it looks so much nicer when you've got a fresh face. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know just what it is. Just some moisturiser. Yeah. yeah. Um, Maybe I need tinted moisturiser. What was the dilemma we were talking about? Oh, he stays in too much. Yeah, so... I don't know what she's going to do about that. Try, I feel like try a technique for long enough to see if it works. And if it doesn't work, what else? Part like, of it, just actually don't care, don't moan, don't say anything. Just be like, bye, out with the girls, bye. Oh my God, she, that's so much fun. But maybe she's doing that. I was doing that. It didn't work. Yeah, it doesn't work. Um, also, you So can what try, do you think, Mandy? I think you need to like, ask him in a nice way, please for me. And then when he does, if he does agree, then you need to make it his funnest night ever and do that like as a pattern. And then also, I saw this actually on some like psychologist said or something on TikTok. If they do something that you really love, like for example, in this case, he comes out with you, you appraise him so much for it. Like yeah. afterwards, the next day be like, babe, I had the best time so much. Thank you so much for yesterday. I agree. Men love that. Thank you. Thank you. Up the it's more a brainwashing you, technique. Every, the more you say thank you and you're just the best boyfriend in the world. I say that all the time whenever. Yeah, same. Whenever Kalzik does something I like. <laughs> best boyfriend in the world. Bullshit. When Gingerbread does something I like, I just do star jumps. I'm just so like showering him with love and compliments. Because it's just kind of like a technique because then they think, oh my God, I'm so amazing. Yeah. I'm the grip, such a great boyfriend. So maybe she should do that. But what if he's one of those guys that would never ever an R? agrees to come out with her, then he's just a dick. Then maybe we should consider just... Yeah, because the, everyone does things for the other half. They, they right? don't really want to because they, exactly. compro they might compromise You do bit. it because you love that person. You want to yeah. see them smile. Yeah. All right. Well, moving on. I've always said I'll change my last name when we get married, but now it's getting closer to the wedding day. I'm having serious second thoughts but he won't allow me to keep my name. It's important to him and he says he won't marry me if I don't change my name to his. Oi, this is a really good one, yeah? <laughs> this is a really good one. First of all, I feel like there's nothing more romantic than taking the man's name. Me too. I'm just not going to lie. I just love it. Well, like, what if his surname's like dick fuck? I'll take the dick fuck. Or fucker. Like me, Put the fucker. it all over me. Mandy, dick fuck fucker. I, I, I take the man's name. Really? That's the whole sex thing about it. Like Mrs. Blah, blah, blah. Mrs. Dick Fucker Fucker. Yeah. Back Fucker. Mm, that's fuck me, Dick Fucker. fucker. But, <laughs> dick like, fucker. also, very extreme, I won't marry you. <laughs> like, I'm not choosing my life partner, my soulmate, the person who I've connected with out of all these seven billion people just because they won't take my last name. I'm not going to be with them. Like, 
a bit extreme, no? Yeah, but some men are like that. I can understand why he's upset, though. It's yeah, very, I like... think it's, a, I, it's traditional, isn't it? This is what I'd say, yeah, because from my, what I can see from this is that she's kind of having second thoughts. She's not sure. Whereas to him, it's very important. Yeah. So I think if it's so important to him, like it's obviously such an important thing to him. Then just, just do it. Just do it. Yeah, because if you were like adamantly like, no. there's no way I want his second name. Right. Then, okay, well, that's a bit of a catch-22. But since you were like, at first she said she was going to take it, but now she's having second first, that means you've already considered it. Yeah. So bitch, just take it. Yeah, that's what I think. Just do it. Sometimes, I mean, it's such a big thing though. That's your name now. I think put your your name as your middle name. Yeah. Do that. Like, it'll be your name, then your surname's your middle name, and then his name. Yeah, but I don't, I don't think he will not marry you over that anyway. I think he's uh, just, I think he's bluffing. Are you joking me? Kowzik's the sort of person that if I said I won't take your name, he won't marry me. That's really bad. Do you really believe when shit hits a fan, when it comes down to it, and he has to lose you and go with another girl and marry another woman? 100%. He'd find another woman and marry a whole other woman just because you don't want to take his surname? 100%. That's not love though. But that's what he's like. He's a very like... God, I can't explain it. He's very traditional in that kind of way. I don't think that's a true representation of love. Maybe, and I, maybe ginger, he doesn't love me. He's just that sort of person. For example, me and Kowslik have that situation. I, don't, where, I think Gingerbread would probably do the same thing as Kowslik. What, not marry you? Yeah, and I don't think that's a true love. If I, I think love if, is... If that happened, it would really make me question. If it actually happened, they actually went through with it, like Gingerbread went through with that, I would really question his love because I'm so much more important than a name. Do you I know don't what know. I mean? I, I, I get what you mean, but I also think people have love in different ways. Like, maybe they love us. Like, I think Kazik loves me, but I think his love for himself and his needs Obviously and his... he loves you. It's more. Do you I get mean, what I'm saying? I, to, to walk away and say goodbye, Mandy, yeah. for the rest of my life when I planned on growing old with you, yeah. traveling the world with you, I can't connect with you like no other, yeah. but goodbye because the words, the letters of your last name are different. Yeah. Like, that would be outrageous That's to me. That's kind of more like their love for what they want is more yeah. than their love for you. But it doesn't mean they don't love you. Yeah, I agree. Do you know what I mean? Like, his I, I needs are more important. Like, basically, me and Kalsik have this issue. I'm not going to say what it is, but... What if, is it? As in, like, I'm not going to go into detail with it, but, like, we have this thing where we, when we talk about when we get married and have our first kid, what he wants to name his kid son in Iranian can be a bit of a like a rude thing like if you translate it in Farsi I'm not going to say what it is but I was like oh I don't know if I want to name my son that because when you translate it in Farsi it's very rude mm. and he's like there's no way that the, the, our son is going to be named anything other than this okay so if you said no that would be it so you'd be married you'd have a newborn baby and he'd walk out because you're not naming it that name be realistic. But not, we have these conversations now though. But can you not see like he's bluffing? He's not bluffing. So you'd leave his wife with his kid because, no, because he wouldn't she's have a not kid. naming no, him. No, but he won't have a kid with me if I say no. Yes, he would. You think he's not going to bust inside you and let you get pregnant? Well, no. If you don't agree to those terms these, and conditions. Because we're having these conversations. Okay, so when you're like, when you're having sex, yeah, and at a point where you're both in a very good position to have a baby and get settled down, me. you think he'd be like... Why don't you let me talk? Are you going to make sure... Why are you not letting me talk? We're having these conversations now. Okay. So when we have these conversations now, if I turn around to Kazik now and say, no, there is absolutely no way, he will probably cut me off right now. BS. I don't believe it. You don't believe it? No. A hundred percent. These situ- these things we've had conversations about. Babies' names, <laughs> our, ba- our baby being circumcised because I didn't. I wanted my kid circumcised. He says no. So this has already come up. Like all these things have come up. I mean, all of these th- these things, he will not budge. I'm so sorry. I just find this so funny. I do not think he would. Oh my God. I know my boyfriend. I know if I turn around now, but the fact that, he will marry me and will have a kid is because he knows that I'm going to be more like lenient on it. Really? Yeah, because even though I want like my kids circumcised, it's not like for me the end of the world. But for him, it's like the end of the world if they're circumcised. Do you know what I mean? Like, like I, yeah, I get what you're saying. Like, I've had these conversations with Gingerbeard, right? About like, I want my kids circumcised or, or names, whatever. Like, it's more of like we laugh about it. We no. tease each other, we wind each other up. No. But we never actually come to it. 
we're not moving forward with our relationship. No, we had we almost got into a fight about it. That is so funny. And then I'm mean. like, am I actually going to fight him? And then we're going to break up because we will break up. Look, man. I mean, the circumcised thing, like you said, I'm a bit like you in that one. I'm not that bothered because out of all the dicks I've had, I've ended up in love with an uncircumcised one. So there must be something magical about them. <laughs> so I don't know. But the other things like the name. He said I'm, you could pick the girl's name. He said, if it's a boy, I want this name. It's a tradition in my family. We all do it. Da, 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 da. Fine. Like, it's so important but to there's him. there's a nickname for that name, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah. I so, mean, look, like, it is what it is. If he's got that weird name, like, he needs to just be really integrated with the Greek community, do you know what I'm saying? Because the Iranian community is going to laugh at him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just say he's Greek, you know. Yeah, just, just look, and this is, for me, like, I am a very, sh- I, I n- believe I'm a strong woman and I can't be controlled. Yeah. But I just truly believe that if something's not that that important to you, don't for your own kind of like ego and, yeah. and trying to prove a point to yourself and others kind of push things and cause sh- shit situations with your other half and cause fights and breakups, of, you know, potentially just because you're trying to prove a point. Yeah, but then I'm starting to think like, why do I not have something that I'm like not budging on? Do you know what I mean? Why have I not got something that I'm so passionate and like... Because and there's no deal breaker for me. I'll tell you why. Because firstly, the name situation, like in Greek community is such a like traditional thing for them to take their parents name or whatever like for, especially in my boyfriend's family they take yeah they all even like his brother's kids the same name the dad's got the same name they all have the same name yeah so that for them is so important but for us it's not right secondly like the circumcision thing we don't have a religion oh yeah like yeah. whereas they're christian and like, I don't think it's, I don't think it's a thing for Christians to be circumcised. No, it's definitely not. I'm sure if we were like, it's mu- a thing for them to not be circumcised. Yeah, I'm sure if we were Muslim and we were like very strict Muslims, we, we would, would be, be like, like, yeah, passionately. We wouldn't have lasted this long with them. Yeah. So that's why, because we're just chilled. We're like secular. But like, for example, you do have certain things that you'd be thinking about. For example, like if you're. If Cal, if Gingerbeard was like, you know, my daughter isn't allowed to drink, for example. That would be the fun. Sorry, she just literally said Gingerbeard. <laughs> and like, he's the biggest alcoholic. He could have come up with a better example. example. <laughs> I'm, thinking, I'm thinking of an example. Like, she's not allowed to go out wearing skirts. Yeah, yeah, I get you. You would be like, what the fuck? You, you think my future daughter isn't going to be allowed to wear a skirt? Yeah. That would probably cause you to break up right now. Yeah. 100%. Can, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, imagine right now, he was like, Your, our daughter in the future, she can't wear no skirts. You'd be like, well, she will. And then he'd be like, I'm telling you now, she won't. And then that's and be it. Like, what's the point of going forward with this? What's the point? And that's what my point was yeah. when you were saying to me that Kalzik's going to get you pregnant. I just didn't know that he would be that serious and walk away from you over a name. That serious about the name. Oh, God. Tonight, I'm going to go and like pick Gingerbeard's brain. I want to know what he's so serious about. Please don't. God, knowing you lot, you, you're going to end up... You're going to be going to end up... Anna's of a suitcase. <laughs> yeah. I someone wrote in the comments, um, every week and one of you packing a suitcase, what kind of relationships are you in? Hey, it's, like, been a, it's, like, it's been a week or last, two. We haven't. Oi, last night at like three in the morning, I started replying to a few comments. Yeah. We I'll, need to start doing that. Yeah. So how do I do that? I need a login. Don't piss me off. Can I can I do Don't it? Don't piss me off. Are you sure? Don't piss me off. Do I've I logged know? you into YouTube Studio about a hundred times. And I can reply from there. Yeah. And I feel like we should balance it because it's hard work for just me to do it because you're not so I'm working popular. now. Bullshit. I'm working now. We're gonna start replying to comments from Bitch, now. You need to like understand that I've got a job now. It's hard for me. Anyway, I think we'll end it on now because we've done like a long episode now. How long has it been? Yeah, but we didn't do enough dilemma. I know, but you know I, I actually like was worried about today because obviously I was at work from like early like guys because you know I work because I was up from like 7 o'clock I feel really tired mm. you know even it's like travelling all day it feels like that yeah. even though I'm sitting down I'm tired from it's still just, draining it's draining Um, so I need to make sure that we do the podcast on my days off so I've just got more oh, of a pump and a vibe because guys I'm working now I'm hungry. I mean I don't think it makes a difference I didn't work today and I'm so tired really <laughs> why are we better in the morning as well do you know what I think we should do still stick to Saturday mornings Mm-hmm. Saturday mornings are a vibe when Love Island's over that's what we'll do yeah and yeah. what are we doing when we're going away for like a whole month 
We're going to have to pre-record, aren't we? Oh, God. Yeah. Send us some suggestions. <laughs> anyway, guys, Do you know what I really you. like doing, though? I like recording an episode while we were away. Oh, but we can't do that. Yeah. Maybe we could do a podcast special away. But how? We're going to have to pack our mics and stuff. Yeah. Podcast away. Home and away. Yeah, but it has to have the same background. Do, do they care? They just want to see us. Really? I don't know. I think it was really cool. Shall we? We could try it. Hmm, maybe. Hmm. Consider it. So guys, check my stories out from next week, Tuesday on Instagram. I'm going to show you my new office. As you know, I don't know if it's going to be ready then, but <laughs> it's Charles Henry Pepiat. Go say hi to her in Kentish Town. Stop saying that. Like, it's really scary. What? People are going to come in. And stalk you. Yeah, and I'm, what if I look ugly? Well, I don't hope you don't start Do you know what? Like, I was thinking, you're putting out this effort in the first week, two weeks. I was like, I wonder how long it's going to take before you yeah, start. Yeah, but I'm not really putting... Starts rolling in at work looking like shit. I look like shit now. No, you don't. But I'm not really putting effort in, I know. This is just mascara. Yeah, That's why nice. I wanted to start off like that. But I'm used to it. Don't forget, I worked in Harvey Nichols as a makeup artist for two years. Traveled mm. an hour and a half there and an hour and a half back. And I used to have a full face every day, full time. That's mad. That's a madness. Anyway, guys, on that note, we love you and we will see you next week. We love you guys. Bye. Bye.